Sonic Colors Ultimate is a disappointment in practically every way. From the arguably worst lighting to the subpar remixes, not to mention the numerous glitches and graphical bugs, Sega should have known better and not have released it in the state it's in. This is my review for Sonic Colors Ultimate. To make sure we're all on the same page, this will simply be a review of the remaster and not the game itself. If you want to know what I feel about the game, in a couple words, I don't like colors. That's it. The remaster poorly presents itself on the first minute of boot up. For one, it takes a relatively long time to boot on the Switch version, and when it's done, you can see the actual title screen, and that's when it gets even worse. The lighting on the title screen is awful. Just, just awful. The Wisps look like they saw a murder in front of their eyes and they can't get the image out of their head because they don't blink, which was a problem in the original, they didn't blink there, but the lighting makes it look much more, like, grim. And the first level looks even worse, arguably. I've never seen Tropical Resort look that lifeless. And when you think of Sonic Colors, you think of Colorful, but Tropical Resort looks like the exact opposite of what you'd think it would. The funny thing is, only Act 1 is like this. The rest of the acts are mostly fine, and you think the first level would be the best to give players a good impression, but no. Let's talk about the cutscenes. On Switch specifically, they look devastatingly awful. They seemingly used AI upscaling, which may bother some, including me, but most won't care. The problem is that they didn't filter the footage properly, and it gives the footage a vertical shimmering effect, which wasn't in the original. It comes off as very amateur and unprofessional. Not only is the upscale bad, but at least on Switch, the bitrate is horrible. You can tell they really had to, like, crunch down these videos to get it to fit into an 8GB cartridge. There's artifacting literally all over the entire screen, making it very messy and unpleasant to watch. I forgot to mention this, but modders actually found the cutscene data within the game, so Blind Squirrel just didn't want to re-implement these cutscenes. Just shows the level of care we're dealing with. And while yes, the animations obviously aren't perfect, as you can see there's a bit of hitching due to it being 60fps instead of 30, it's still miles better than what is in the official release. Let's talk about the audio balancing. It's not good. Sometimes sound effects will play in one ear cup, left or right. Sometimes they'll play in both, but they'll be really loud. Sometimes they won't play at all. Sometimes music won't play at all, specifically when you summon a wisp. Sometimes music just won't play. Every time I play this, I just wonder, where is Sega QA? Where is Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft QA? How was none of this caught? I don't... I don't understand. Speaking of QA, let's get to the glitches. As of right now, the game is on 1.0.4, so I can't capture any more glitches, but I did capture more than enough for this review. Depending on what you do, things like this are surprisingly common. The game also has a tendency to produce really bright, flashing lights constantly. There's also smaller things like this, where the brightness of the laser wisp is just completely wrong. Though, if you're just lucky enough, you might get the game to crash on you. It only happened once for me, but once is too many times in my opinion. Things unloading in the background before they're off the screen is surprisingly far too common. And sometimes when you use a laser wisp, Sonic will just duplicate himself. Depending on the surface, stomping won't function properly, along with some of the most egregious pop-in I've ever seen. I think the developers must have had it out for the stomping ability or something, because it is absolutely awful in this game. I don't even know how to explain this one. And what makes it worse is that all these glitches happen throughout the entire game. I wish I was joking. And not only that, there's even more I haven't mentioned. Let's just get onto the music before I pop a blood vessel. So the remix tracks in the game, honestly, at best, they're just mediocre. There's a couple of standouts, but other than that, most of them are almost the exact same, or they add unnecessary instruments that make it sound objectively worse. Here, take a listen. <laughs>
just say I'm not the biggest fan. But then, at the same time, there are other remixes that are absolutely amazing. This remix is absolutely amazing and I love it immensely. It's a shame the first time I played this stage, the music broke. That's my main problem with the game. They did a few things right, and those few things they did do right, they did very right. But the problem is, the glitches, and the horrible UI, and the mediocre graphics, and the mediocre music just all adds up into something that will never be more than a 6 out of 10 for me. Because even if Sega fixes every single glitch in the game, they're not going to change the graphics, they're not going to change the music or the UI. It's all going to be the same, aka bad. And that's even if they fix it in the first place, because we don't know if they're going to do that. They said they have, but I don't have faith in that happening. Let me explain my beef with the UI real quick. In a word, it's ugly. It clashes with the rest of the game, which has a pretty normal UI for the most part. Not only that, but there's literally no animation of any kind. When you hit the X button to go into Rival Rush, it just pops up. It's very odd. Also, Rival Rush is stupid. It's basically a time trial, but instead of a ghost, it's just bad Metal Sonic. It's also never explained why Metal Sonic is even here. If you really want to count Rises of the Wisps, whatever, I don't care. It's an annoying short that is inoffensive at best, but... Why is he here? Like, it's never explained. And this is why, in my opinion, at least one of the reasons why the game feels very last minute. Like, they, I don't know, rushed it? J just a thought, just a thought, maybe. If you go and play this for yourself, you'll be able to tell that this is not a complete game. It honestly feels like this is some sort of prototype that leaked that I shouldn't be playing, but no, it's sitting on my shelf as we speak. Speaking of on my shelf, let's talk about the physical version. For one, if you buy physically, you get the Baby Sonic keychain. I, I know everyone in the world was just clamoring for a Baby Sonic keychain. Second, if you want to get any of the DLC, to get it as cheap as possible, you have to go to whatever digital store and buy the digital deluxe version. So if you want a physical, too bad. Have fun ponying up an extra $5 for the most useless DLC known to man. And the physical version itself is easily the biggest waste of space I think I've ever seen. The box for the Switch version is the size of a Blu-ray case, despite the size of a Switch case in diameter being less, therefore the box should be smaller, but because Sega is lazy, they didn't want to design a smaller box for Switch. To me, since I'm a physical collector, it just comes off as incredibly lazy, and not only that, it takes up a lot more space on my shelf than it realistically should. Before I wrap up the video, let me talk about the options, which are next to non-existent. Let's start with the tail save. If you have any tail saves and you die, instead of just going to a checkpoint, Tails will take you to the closest spot to where you died at. So if you die right by a checkpoint, it's essentially useless. Not only is there no option to not use a tail save, there's no option to turn off the tail save feature at all, basically making the game even easier than it already was. And on top of all that, if you don't like the remixes, you can't turn them off. Now, the nice thing about this is that, is that every act now has its own unique song, where unlike the original, the songs doubled, but I don't really see that as a bonus if I don't like the new compositions. All in all though, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you like Sonic Colors and can deal with the issues with the remaster, then you'll probably like it. But as someone who not only doesn't like colors, but doesn't accept glitchy, broken pieces of garbage, it's definitely not for me. So a little channel update, I apologize for the lack of uploads, I've been 
busy with school and my job. Um, I'll try to get the output higher. Um, no promises though. But you may be asking, what is my next video going to be? Let's just say I've got something really special lined up. But for now, that video is going to have to wait. See ya.